Hey everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I am bringing you the latest installment in the story of the Kenmore Freearm Convertible. This of course is the machine that was given up for dead by a prior owner, uh, left outside in a bag, and I went and rescued it before they threw it away. And I wanted to find out what was going on with it. Why did they give up? And of course I found, as you've seen in the prior videos, Someone in the past has used the wrong lubricant, a thick grease, where they should have been using uh, sewing machine oil. And apparently it got exposed to high heat because a lot of that grease has gotten gummed up and has created a kind of cement uh, in, th in literally throwing a, a, a wrench in the works, so to speak. Uh, so I've gradually been able to get movement in the machine and that's good. Still haven't got zigzag going yet. And I think I mentioned to you all that I wanted to, to do a video where we start to look, I want to look at the side. I mentioned to you, I can't, you know, I see where grease was, was put uh, underneath when we did the, the, the video showing from underneath. You could see where grease had been um, applied somewhere in toward the belt, but I couldn't tell if it was on the belt for sure, and I want to know. That's a, that's a big question. Uh, now this is, of course, the hand wheel, and by the 70s, instead of the old clutch knobs, which was used for generations, if you wanted to wind a bobbin, you would pull out on the hand wheel. And that would basically unlock the drivetrain so your needle wouldn't move. You would wind your bobbin, and when you were ready to sew again, you would simply push in. Uh, not sure why they thought that was clever, but it's a more complex design. But in any case, what we want to do is to, we're gonna remove this panel, this side piece here, and I'm going to show you how that happens and how to do it uh, without causing damage to the machine. Because although the machine's body and chassis is made of steel, the, as you saw with the bottom panel, which is plastic, the side panel here is plastic. That's not really an issue when it comes to this machine being tough because the side panel is essentially a dust cover. It's not really under a lot of tension. However, we want to be careful um, when we go to remove it because we've got steel screws going through plastic, um, uh, plastic uh, attachment sections here. So I'm going to give us a closer up section. I'm going to move us up closer and you'll get to see exactly what I'm uh, um, about to start detaching here. Okay guys, as you can see, there are two screws here in the top. And this is what is going to help release this side panel. And then I'll try to show you there are two little hinge clips that hold it in at the base of the machine. It's a fairly simple attachment. But again, it's one of those things that may not be obvious because, uh, as I was saying before, you know, here's the lid. They started hiding things from the, from the uh, machine sewer. You could, for example, you, I've mentioned to you guys, there are no holes in the lid here. If you want to oil your machine as you're supposed to, you're going to have to take the lid off and I showed you how to do that in another video. It's not that big of a problem but you can see how the manufacturers are already they're trying to make life difficult for um, people in terms of servicing their own machines. And anyway I'm going to take my um, my straight screwdriver bits tool here and I'm going to I always approach loosening screws cautiously. These let's see it looks like these have both been lubricated at some point. I don't know if this was part of the grease war that somebody waged on this machine, but they're coming out fairly simply. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here, uh, it's not common that I have many screws to remove in the top section of a machine. This is one of those times. Now, you may remember in my video on the Sewing Machine Restorer's Toolbox, I showed you guys this. It's a telescoping uh, magnet. And I, I can't remember if I got it in a car, auto parts store or what. And it's not something I use often, but when you need it, it's really useful. So this is a situation where if I loosen these screws, if they drop, they might drop all the way through the machine and go rolling off into the floor. And that would be your best case scenario. Worst case is they drop in the machine and get lodged somewhere and that could be a real pain and not a fun project. So I'm gonna take the, um, the uh, magnet tool here 
and it's it's attaching but I have a few more through there we go this one came right off as you can see now let me loosen this left one just a bit more and that might have done it yeah so now I've got both screws out safely and I'm going to set those aside in my little tray here now um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how this panel comes off um, I'm going to tug on it and notice I'm being careful I'm not just pulling on it like it was an anchor I'm going to be very gentle and so far sometimes they stick um, I get the feeling that this may have been taken off because I'm seeing that grease here sitting on the plastic and I've also but this is coming right off so at least that's one good side effect of what they did to the machine now I'm going to lower the camera and I'll show you how it comes off uh, the side of the machine okay so I've gotten a, a better position here for you all to see the bottom so as you were seeing me move the top of the side panel again be gentle and easy this is 1970s plastic here and it's coming right off hold the base with your fingers because as I lift up there's not there are no screws here there are these little metal hinge uh, I don't know what you'd call them little metal clips and they basically allow this panel to sit in two little notches right here and so if I were to put it back of course I would put the put the hinges in and then swing the side panel back up over the hand wheel but be careful because if you un if you unscrew the um, the top of this and you're not aware it could literally fall off and fall on the floor uh, I know this from my own experience now <laughs> let's take a look what you are looking at is part of the secret to this Kenmore model and the series of models this is the secret to its power folks it has a 1.2 amp motor which many of the Kenmores from uh, several decades had and it's a fantastic motor but uh, I have mentioned to you all in the past I believe that Sears wanted a machine that they could compete with Bernina now the, the Swiss company Bernina, in addition to being one of the earlier companies that did free arms, uh, free arm or convertible sewing machines, uh, the Bernina company had what's called a reduction pulley. And if you look closely, you'll see the hand wheel right here. And <clears throat> the hand wheel has a belt, but then there's a second belt. So these machines have two sewing machine belts, okay? Um, and if you look, this particular one um, connects the hand, the upper one is, goes from the hand wheel down to this small uh, wheel on the pulley. And then the second belt is on uh, the back wheel of the pulley. And of course, it connects down to the small pulley, which is uh, uh, attached to the motor itself. And the principle behind this is that if you use this pulley, that you can get more torque you know the power the machine has comes from its motor and you can say well the amperage is what it is it doesn't change but you can maximize the piercing power of your needle and that theory uh, was used by Bernina and again uh, I'm sure that Sears had conversations with the, the Japanese company that made this machine and said hey why don't you use something like that so we can talk about how our machines are very much like Bernina's now, many of you are fans of either Kenmore or Benina machines, and you may have your own opinions as to whether the Kenmore holds a candle to the Bernina. I would suggest to you that it's a pretty impressive competitor. If, you, uh, if any of you have always coveted a Bernina uh, and you, from the vintage era I'm referring to, and you don't want to pay the incredibly high prices that they bring, and if you shop for them, you know this, you can look them up on eBay, the uh, 730, the 530, the 830 uh, records. Um, if you can find a Kenmore, if you can find one of these Kenmore free arms, uh, I, I would suggest you have a pretty, a pretty amazing uh, comparable machine to the Bernina. And I know that that will elicit some, some disagreement out there and that's okay, disagreement's fine. Now, this is one of the things I wanted to check with this machine. I wanted to see that the belts um, are still usable 
Now, when I look at them, I don't know if this shows up in the camera, but I see some shine on the side here, but I'm, my finger is clean and I want to rub it against here. When I do this, I don't feel any oil. Sometimes it's difficult to see oil and grease on something that is already shiny. I don't know what the rubber compound is on these belts. They're, they, you know, they're cogged. They have these little ridges in them that helps with um, friction. So uh, right now I don't feel any oil or grease on them. So it's very possible that whoever, <laughs> whoever has, you know, hit this machine with grease, I'm hoping that they had the sense not to put the grease on the belts. Uh, and if they did, you know, it's, you know, I'm sure they didn't do it intentionally. We all learn and sometimes we learn the hard way. Because if you look closely, you will see there's a lot of this, this uh, old grease is sitting here. So someone has gone in on the side. They really went to town with this machine. And um, it looks like they avoided touching the power switch. That's nice. Um, now, while I'm in here, let's talk about this uh, belt setup because if you see this for the first time you might think let me let me zoom back out a little bit you might think gosh you know oh man this looks difficult what what, what am i supposed to do with this thing and how am i supposed to adjust it well actually it's not as bad as it looks some european brand machines can be much more challenging to work on i have restored berninas before and it took a lot longer to get access to the belts and uh, even to adjust them but this one is actually not bad. So I'm going to point to you, I'll show you, uh, this is not a uh, exact test. Uh, and belt tension is something that uh, you really have to, I think I refer to it in my troubleshooting video, but it's, it's not something that we have a digital gauge for. So if you look at the belt right here, I'm gonna push on this upper belt. And when I push in, I'd like to be able to push in and move the belt less than one quarter inch. And you know, that's, that's an estimate, right? Where this is like a guesstimating thing. So that tension feels pretty good. And I notice that when I turn the hand wheel, both, both belts are turning. I don't see any slipping right now, but remember the machine's not under load. If you go to sew thick fabrics and your belt slips, that means you need increased tension. Now this belt here, when I push in on it, it pushes in um, more than I would like. Um, it may be fine, but I, again, I think I'd like to get a little bit more tension on that belt. So how do we do that? <clears throat> well, if you look closely here, there's a bracket, a steel bracket. Let me zoom in. There's a steel bracket here. And this bracket has spaces that allow it to move to the left or to the right. And there are two screws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these screws and then I'm going to see if I can get any adjustment on the tension of the belt. And the good thing is you don't have to remove the belts, although removing the belts is not scary because again, once we get this, this, um, <clears throat> excuse me, once we get this bracket moving, if we loosen it enough, we can actually get the belts off the pulley. Uh, so they, they were, they were fairly clever in that design. Now, this is one of those things that when you try to do, if it's just you and you have two hands, you're going to need at least the help of a screwdriver here. So I've got a screwdriver on this side and I've got my other hand free with my screwdriver here. Now, what I want to do is I want to push this bracket to the right. Now, if you look at what's happening, as I do that, I'm, I'm moving it away from the motor, which is stretching and adding tension to the lower belt. So a little bit to the upper, but not much. It's mostly the lower belt that this is impacting. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to hold this tight as I tighten the screws on this bracket. If I don't, you see it wants to slide to the left again, and that's not going to be useful. So I'm going to hold this. <clears throat> Let me pan back out. I want to make sure you guys can see what my hands are doing here. It's a little a little odd. So I've got my hand on the screwdriver here, okay, and I'm pushing to my right. I've got the screwdriver on that on that bracket. I'm going to push over to the right because I want to increase the tension on the belt. And now I'm going to take my screwdriver in my other hand here and tighten the screws. 
And I want to emphasize to you guys again, when you tighten screws generally on a sewing machine, you want to make them snug, but you don't need to torque them down like, like uh, you know, these are not lug nuts on a car. So you want it to make it secure, secure, but don't over tighten it to the point where you strip it. Uh, and that's going to be even more important when we get to, uh, you know, screws and plastic. Now that screw is helping hold it. I need to, of course, tighten this one as well. And that's fine. It shouldn't go anywhere. Now, when I <clears throat> push back on my belt now, this lower belt, notice that I have, now I'm getting within a quarter of an inch, but I've just really, I'm really pleased with that. And I still have the same tension on the upper belt. So, <clears throat> might as well do this while we're in there. And another thing I'll, I'm going to do is I'm going to put, after all that grease went flying around the machine, uh, I cannot tell that they did this, but I'm going to put one drop of sewing machine oil on the little uh, nut. It may be actually part of a bearing on this pulley, if you want to call it a bearing. So now I've got that, and that should help. It'll prevent squeaking and keep that pulley happy. What else can we do? Just as, an, uh, as something to be extra, extra sure, this, of course, is my little jar of rubbing alcohol. Now, I don't want to splash alcohol everywhere. That's not going to be helpful and it could be harmful. But one thing I would like to do is I'm going to take a cotton swab here. <clears throat> and because I can't always, you can't always see if there's oil um, that has gotten on the pulley, I'm going to take uh, rubbing alcohol on one end of my Q-tip or my cotton swab here. And I'm going to go over it, over that open space in the pulley where the belt is, is not touching. And then on my dry side of my uh, cotton swab here, I'm going to come over and dry it. Now, I don't see anything here. <clears throat> there might be no oil at all. I can't tell. But it's worth a shot because, again, if any oil or even dirt gets on this pulley, the surface where the, um, where the belt touches, you can end up with problems with your belt. Your belt's not going to want to participate very well. Now, let's move, we'll move this forward and we'll do it again. I got another cotton swab and then I'm going to dry it again and once more and we should be able to um, get the whole surface of the pulley. Notice I'm not putting alcohol on the belt. If the belt had oil or grease on it, I would just take it off and replace it. Um, I'm just not sure, you know, I would, it, it sounds like almost another project to try to clean all that off the belt. Um, but we can certainly make sure that the pulley is clean without <clears throat> even have to having to remove the belt. Now I'm going to come down here and again I have a space on that pulley that's uh, open and I'm going to come over here with the alcohol and then I'm going to come back with a dry, the dry side of that cotton swab. Make sure that you don't leave cotton hairs. Then we'll turn it, get a clean swab, dip it in the alcohol on one end, and again, I'm gonna come under here where the pulley is exposed, and then back with the dry side of the cotton swab. One more time, and that should do it. That should get the, uh, the circumference of this pulley. And this could be a preemptive thing. It could be that there's no oil here. I just, you know, I just want to go ahead. Uh, this is part of sewing machine restoration is you go in and you do things and you don't always know if they're needed or not, but at least you know they've been done and they've been taken care of. And that's my approach to restoration. Um, I, I, don't, I don't do things half. Where you, either we're going to do the whole machine or, or just I'm not going to bother. Because it, you, when you have something that's gone this long without service, you can't guess, you know, and this way you have the satisfaction of knowing you did it. Uh, it's been done uh, and it should. Then you don't have to think about it again. So <clears throat> we got good news here, folks. It looks like, as best I can tell, uh, whoever um, splashed this machine with grease managed not to get it on the belts. And I'm very grateful because the belts are in good shape. I don't see any cracking. I don't see any shredded belt anywhere. Uh, if you ever have to replace belts on this machine, you can get replacements for them. 
Isn't it awesome that something that's been out of production for so long, you can still get sewing machine belts. You don't have to go to Sears. They're not specific to, to, to that retailer. And, uh, and they're not expensive, right? Later on, you start getting very proprietary um, parts for machines. I mean, even the old ones have proprietary parts, but things like belts, you could, you know, you could basically, um, you could still get. So I hope this was helpful and you all were able to, to see this. You just don't see this particular uh, picture. Um, you don't get a, a view of this part of the machine very often. And here, here's my a little side panel here. Again, to put it back, you want to take the little um, uh, metal uh, clips, I guess you'd call them, and you'll notice that the, the side panel comes back up your power switch should be poking its little face through there. And <clears throat> I'm just going to put the screws back in. Uh, and again, I want to do this in a way, this is extra, even more important than what I was showing you before. When you have a metal screw and you're attaching it to something like a plastic panel, I'm, I'm going to screw the, the screw into, uh, it seats in metal, but it goes past plastic. And as soon as I feel it start to get snug, I stop. That's all that's needed. Again, it's not weight bearing. It's not, it's not crucial. You know, uh, the motor is not, you know, torqued on this or anything like that. And I want to be extra careful because this plastic is not cracked and there's no reason it should because you don't need to tighten these screws that much. All they need is to be a little snug so that they don't, you know, that they're not going to, to loosen. You, let's see if you can see me turning this. And so here you see me turning and it just snugged up and I stopped. That's all you need, right? And that little plastic panel should sit there. My, my switch works great. And uh, so we are done with that side view. And if any of you have any questions or comments about where we are with this sad Kenmore, <laughs> But uh, I, again, I wanted you to kind of go through this with me so that if you've never, if let's say you have one of these machines and you're like, gosh, I don't even know if my belts are any good. How do I look at them? It's actually not tough. Once you get the top off, you take the two screws. Be patient, but be extra gentle. Plastic is not steel and old plastic is even more fragile. But you can do this without harming or breaking the machine. Just go slow. Don't be in a hurry. Patience, again, is a, is a virtue here. So anyway, hang in there with me, folks. I am uh, going to be um, f making another video, and we're going to try to get this zigzagger to move. That's going to be uh, one of the biggest challenges is to see if the zigzag can unlock. Part of that is simply letting it sit because it still has the WD-40 that I had put on it before. And sometimes these, uh, you know, this getting a machine to wake up, it takes time. You know, it, it just, it's been sitting a long time and uh, once we get it uh, awakened and moving again, gradually we'll start getting, hopefully to a point where we'll even do some uh, of the decorative stitches. And then we know we're on our way and we, we may in fact have ourselves a fantastic sewing machine. And yes, the price was free, but the time is definitely not. Thank you all for watching and uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.